Spiritual Psychic Cynthia Killian here, also known as Psychic Cynthia. And welcome back to our Connecting with Your Ancestors and Ancestral Spirits course. And we're going to pick up here where we left off uh, talking about the ancestors. And um, just as a quick recap, last time I talked about the, the importance of maybe picking one or two ancestors as you're getting started with this work, one or two specific ancestors. Now listen, you can work in general with the ancestors and that's okay too. Uh, if you need to do that while you're trying to figure out who that one or two is that's calling to you. But your practice will take on more power and energy and healing uh, once you begin to work with individual ancestors. I think that's important to do. Um, and I might add this too, you know, sometimes we want to go far back into the ancient lines, and I do a lot of work with that. And those are going to be lines that are, you know, it's impossible to know the actual identity by, you know, factual means of those ancestors. Like if I want to go back to communicate with my Ice Age Northern European ancestors, you know, I'm not going to be able to know their personalities and their identities necessarily, like by a factual means, by stories even. Um, so that's when we get more into the getting to know them through the meditations and the visions quest. Uh, and that is certainly an option, especially if you are more experienced with vision questing. If you have a lot of experience in actually doing that, a lot of experience in going into meditation, and communicating with spiritual beings. Uh, most people don't have a lot of experience in that. Not that you couldn't get it. It just takes a lot of time meditating and vision questing to do that. So, uh, so again, you might want to start with an ancestor that's more uh, contemporary, closer to our timeline, uh, somebody that you can actually know a little bit more about. I think that would be good um, to help you ground the practices you're going to learn about here. Um, but I'd like to talk a little bit more in this video about um, just what are the ancestors, you know, from this framework we're looking at it from. And listen, this is a, I guess you might say, a multi-spirituality framework that I'm looking at this from because with my background of being, you know, a, a psychic and a spiritualist reverend, a medium, but also, you know, being a Norse pagan and having been schooled in, you know, pagan and Wiccan is Wicca when I was young and even I mean I live in the Midwest in the United States I've also you know experienced some of the Native American spiritualities I am actually some Native American by blood but I don't claim that because I mean I do but I'm not I didn't grow up on a reservation so I'm, I'm not really initiated into those tribes um, any of them actually but the vibration is here from the land. And maybe we'll talk about that later in another uh, part of this course. I think it, it's important when you find yourself living in a place away from, you know, the majority of your tribal ancestors, if you're living like in America, we also want to communicate with the ancestors of this land. Whether they're our own physical ancestors or not, we are here in their land, so we want to honor them you know, as a kind of spiritual ancestor. I mean, this is not to say that we are Lakota, or I mean, you might be, and if you are, you should honor your Lakota ancestors, but the, the land has a link to the ancestors too. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here, so let's, Cynthia, let's drive this car back to where we're at. <laughs> I do that sometimes. You know, we psychics, we circle around, we circle around. Uh, that's the way uh, magic people think, right? And tribal people, so. Uh, there's always a point to it somewhere. But let's talk about, you know, this concept of the ancestors. Um, first of all, if you haven't gotten this already, and I guess I haven't really said it, but with this, this practice of ancestor communion and connection, you know, there is a belief, however you're coming at this, whatever your particular spiritual background is, you know, to undertake this journey, to say, yes, I will communicate with my ancestors, I mean, you are saying, and I am saying, that we hold a common belief 
that the spirit, the spirits of our ancestors live on after they die. Now, I'm a spiritualist, okay, so I, I believe in life after death. I believe in, I guess you might say, personality survival. That's one of the tenets of spiritualism. Um, and, and most many people I encounter do believe in that. Now, you don't have to believe in reincarnation to believe in that. And I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, historically, spiritualists did not believe in reincarnation. That's why they broke with the theosophists. And at least at the time I'm building this video, still to this day, the, the National Society of Spiritualists does not really take a position on reincarnation and doesn't really allow that much in. I mean, because spiritualism is more about just looking at the existence of life after death. And even though these are not, you know, just spiritualist classes per se, I am bringing some of that perspective into this, as I'm sure you would want me to. Uh, so my own personal perspective and yes somewhat being influenced by my spiritualist experiences uh, i see evidence that there is personality after death that when people die not just ancestors just people um, which i guess if they have, if they have kids or family or somebody who looks to them for guidance they are ancestors we'll get back to that again in a minute um, but they have there's a spark within them that exist on the other side. Now, whether you want to say reincarnation happens then, or heaven, or, you know, the summer lands, if you're coming from the Celtic pagan tradition, or, you know, Valaha, <laughs> right? For my Norse friends, shout out to all of you. Um, whatever, you know, whatever your understanding is of, of where they go after they die. I mean, if we're going to communicate with them, there's this understanding that their essence or some part of them, even if it's not their personality. And by the way, in my experience, the personality can change drastically after death. I mean, especially if they were non-believers in, in like another side, you know, that's real eye-opening to die <laughs> when they see the spirit beings there. So that's another topic for another time though. Um, but we are saying, are we not? If we're going to undertake ancestor communication and connection, are we not saying that we believe and we agree that the ancestors exist? Some part of them lives on after they die. I hope that's a, something that you can be comfortable with or at least entertain as you go through these classes. Uh, and listen, I don't require you to, you know, blindly accept anything that I teach or I don't even require you to believe it at all, actually. Um, to take it in and make it yours unless you want to but you need to try it on at least like if you're going to do these classes and get benefit you have to at least be willing to try on that idea that it's possible that you and I survive after death and that our in fact our ancestors have survived after they died their consciousness dear one it's about consciousness survival do you got it and there's this idea, now we're going to go down the rabbit hole here too. Okay, so just prepare yourself. So if you start to think about all the ancestors before you, okay, just think about, go back far. Make this meditation. Begin to think about your mother and your father and your mother's mother and your mother's father and your father's mother and your father's father and then your mother's mother mother and your mother's mother father and your mother's father you so your mother's father's mother and so on right and just keep going back and you know if you start to think about this a lot I think you will begin to see that these lines go back very far they're very ancient and in fact, you know, most modern, you know, scientists that study this kind of thing, or um, I don't know what the right name is for those kind of scientists. There's probably several different ones that do, but um, or even, you know, looking at archaeologists studying bones and history and, and things that we find settlements. You know, there is a belief that's, you know, pretty well accepted that we all came from the same people, probably uh, in Africa. Now there's actually different locations currently, they say. Uh, one location I recently heard is 
uh, near the equator, near Kenya. Um, you know, I don't know if we're ever going to be able to know for sure, like how far and where it goes back to. Um, but I like to think of it this way. Okay, so this is one of those moments where we're going to go even further down the rabbit hole. Okay, this is the Cynthia quantum mindset. Um, if you accept any kind of theory of evolution, any kind, you know, maybe you don't accept it literally. Like I've always thought, like how how did we go from apes to humans? Like there had to be some intervention, and, and you know, maybe there were star people involved. Um, maybe there were experiments. Who knows? I mean, it's hard to know for sure. But just the general philosophy of evolution, if you accept the idea, you know, that we all evolved from a common ancestor. I mean, wow, think about that. Think about how many ancestors they are. And so one of the things you can do, and this is separate than communicating with your contemporary ancestors, but you can try in your spiritual practices, you can make an offering and and begin to meditate on and open to this idea of the common human ancestor or first ancestors. And I think that's a real powerful practice. I'm kind of putting that out here for those of you who maybe already do the communicating with some of your more contemporary specific ancestors and want to go deeper. Um, but who knows, maybe it might be a good starting point for some of you. So uh, let's think about, you know, the first human ancestors. Um, and, you know, you could even think of it in a totem sense. Hear me here. You know, if you look at uh, tribal ideas, and again, this is not just Native American tribal, this is really just what we call shamanism, which that's a word we use in the English language as a synonym for animism. So if you look at any animistic tribes who, uh, you know, are out in nature and worship the spirits of nature, or at least understand there's power in nature, let's put it that way. Um, you know, when they, they talk about power animals, okay, and probably you've heard that idea of a totem or a power animal, and let's say if your power animal is wolf, for example, you know, you don't say, you say it just like I say it usually in most languages, wolf. Wolf is the power animal. You don't say that wolf or this wolf only. You know, you might say white wolf if it's that particular kind. But there's this idea that the animals have group souls, right? That we, we all know, like when you think of a wolf, there's a whole set of characteristics that come to your mind without you even having had to study what that means as a power animal. Uh, some of those characteristics are positive, some are negative, but there is a certain set of energies right to that species so when you connect with wolf you're connecting with what it means to essentially be wolf when you go back and connect with first humans first ancestors you are connecting with what it essentially means to be human the human totem all right you can chew on that for a little while okay so let's get back to uh, a little bit we're going to pull up from the rabbit hole a little <laughs> just a little we're going to go up to maybe closer to practical reality and let's think about um what we talked about last time the ancestors that generally that we're going to work with in this practice are those who we feel a positive connection with because they empower us uh, and why is that let me talk some more about these 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 ancient ancestor practices and and modern you know um the idea with the ancestors is, yes, their consciousness lives on. And in, in many places in the world, in many tribes, in many, just almost everywhere where this kind of connection and communication is practiced, there is this idea that the ancestors in the spirit realm, especially those who led exemplary lives, who had good reputation, who brought honor to their families or their communities, you know, or who sacrificed, la di da di da we get it. Um, and they could live ordinary, quote-unquote, lives too, in a way. I mean, as long as they gave and were kind and caring. Does that make sense? But if you did live an extraordinary life and were like a hero or, you know, you did something really great, all the more better. You were definitely worthy of being counted as an ancestor. Um, and it kind of makes sense, okay, because if consciousness does survive, I mean, who's going to be more likely to come back and help the tribe? I mean, 
somebody who helped the tribe while they were alive or somebody who didn't give a, you know, what, while they were alive. Um, but as a spiritualist, I would say one of our tenets is that redemption is always possible. The doorway to reformation is never closed. So just because you had, you know, if there's some ancestor in your family, um, like my dad really wasn't the greatest, <laughs> that is an understatement, but he has come through a few times and helped me. And I, I do feel like he's working on his, if you want to use the word penance. So <laughs> sometimes it happens that way. But that may not, again, be the only ancestor you want to commune with. Okay. So they have their consciousness over there. And the idea was you know, over there, like there is over there. I mean, there's these multi-levels of reality. They're all here now. Okay. They're all overlapping at once. But you've probably heard the expression of the veil. So there's the idea that there are, there's a, there's a fine dividing line between this physical world and those other non-physical realities. That's the spirit world. And, you know, we talk about maybe like the astral plane and the other finer planes. We don't need to get into all that here because I think trying to overthink it is really going to ruin it for you. Um, and listen, if you have knowledge and schooling in the seven planes of the astral plane, that's great. But don't try to overthink this. Don't try to apply too much analyzation to your ancestor practice. Yes, you need structure and you need maybe a little guidance, but mainly you just need an open heart to communicate with the ancestors. And I look behind me because as I said that, the wind blew and it blew my notebook open. It looks like one of my sheets about the ancestors has flown away, so I'll have to find that later. I hope I can find it later. Somebody else is going to find my interesting notes about the ancestors if I don't. Maybe they need them though. <laughs> I digress. So let's go back to this idea of you know, the ancestors have their consciousness on the other side, and, you know, you're largely trying to connect with the ones whom you can feel a more positive connection with. Uh, they're in this, this finer realm, okay? This non-physical realm. You know, they're in the realm of spirits. There are other spirits there, too. The ancestor realm definitely crosses over into the fairy realm, and I hope to get into this more in the classes, uh, but especially if you are of Irish descent, you know, or even if you just identify with the Irish ancient cultures, it is likely that you have ancestral connections to the fairy realm because the fairies and humans definitely intermated. Nearly every folklore in the world that has any references to fairies has stories about the intermating, but we find more of those stories in Ireland, in the area we call Ireland now, and also in Greece. But really, nowhere in the world except for Ireland and Scotland has so many stories of intermating. Uh, maybe up north with the Selkies. There are definitely stories of that. So yeah, that's that's a topic that will be juicy to explore. Uh, but now think about these spirit realms overlapping and your ancestors being there. And the idea with this uh, spirit uh, communication is that is that they're a little closer to God than us. Okay, uh, the idea is that they're intercessors. And I, I don't really believe that any of us are separate from God, okay? If you want to know my own personal opinion, I mean, God is everywhere, or goddess, as I often like to say, uh, spirit, the oneness. I mean, it is everything. It is all of creation, the divine being. And yet, it is obvious that we're here having this experience and you know, we do have free will. I think most religions agree on that to some extent or another. Then there's this thing called fate, okay? And the ancestors, I guess, the way I would say this, it's not that I believe they're closer to God just because they're on the other side. But I have observed it's easier for them to cut through the bull crap and see things closer to how they really are. Because even though they do have things to do on the other side, I want you to know that at least according to what I'm seeing in my visions, the ancestors often do choose to have jobs and they do choose to build things in their consciousness and they also go to school. There are hospitals to heal spiritually. So there's a whole other world there and they have their whole other world of activities, which is why, you know, if you want to get their attention, you kind of need to do some things to let them know <laughs> you're interested, right? Because they have other things to do there too. Um, but they seem to be, especially if they are an ancestor, as I'm using it in the way I'm using it here, as the way it would be in most tribal societies, if they are a person who lived 
with commitment to their family or their tribe or their spiritual group while they were alive? Do you think that just ends when they die? I mean, look at me. I, here I am doing these spiritual videos and doing these classes. And you know, I mean, maybe you don't know. I mean, I started on this path young. And I mean, geez, I'm still young by most standards, but I've been doing it so long. I mean, I've already done a whole career, but do you think like if I die tomorrow, what, do you think I'm not going to come back or, or answer if somebody, you know, lit a candle and called upon my help? Do you think I'm not going to try to communicate? Do you think I'm not going to try to influence from the spirit world the next generation of teachers? Why would I suddenly abandon my passion and my caring for all of this and for the people involved because I died? That's just ridiculous. I mean... I, the only reason I can think is if I got there and my guide say, hey, we need you over here in this other realm, well, then I'd have to go, okay? Um, but I'd probably negotiate knowing me, and I'd probably still want to be able to come back a little. And certainly, if somebody took the time to light a candle in my honor, and especially if they were in my family line or married in, uh, but even if they didn't, actually, maybe even more so if they were in my spiritual life. I would be likely to come back and assist. So uh, that's what, you know, that's where this all kind of boils down to. It's a very practical philosophy. And, and listen, if you look at ancestor veneration in almost any culture, whether it's Chinese or, you know, one of the African tribes or Native American or uh, the Northern European or just South American, wherever you look, the, the communication with the ancestors, it's often a very, it's spiritual, yes, and it is for spiritual edification. So A, we understand that by communicating with these ancestors who have wisdom. They had wisdom when they were alive, right? Um, who, who comforted us when they were alive, now they can comfort us from the other side. There's a spiritual edification for it and with it. So that's one reason why. Uh, but then two, the other practical element is that they're often called upon to help with very practical daily matters. So if you have a family issue, you know, if you have a housing issue, if you have a money issue, a career issue, you know, you're just trying to figure out life. Because here's the deal, your ancestors love you and they want you to do well. And even going back to that first human ancestor, that those first human ancestors, whoever they are, wherever they are, they, they too must love us on some level and want their species to do well. Whatever color we are, whether we're red or white or black or yellow or, I don't know, purple or green or whatever colors we're going to be in the future, uh, the first humans, the ancient ancestors, want humans to do well. And your ancestors, at least the ones that are worthy to be called upon, they want you to do well and if you call upon them and begin to build a relationship with them or just keep that going, if you already had a relationship, uh, they will help you. That's the whole premise of this. It's a belief that not only these spirits have consciousness, but get this, they can have influence on events and energies in this world. Now, they don't have physical hands like we do, but they do seem to be able to influence the course of events. They can put signs in your path. Uh, they can put ideas, like ideas you think of, like that you think are a great idea. Sometimes they're from an ancestor or a guide, right? They're not your ideas, they're the spirit's ideas. Um, and even more so if you take up this path of consciously communicating. So, uh, you know, the ancestors, they can be consultants, they can be guides, but they are intercessoraries in a way. They help us to access uh, the divine viewpoint because sometimes it gets so hard to see here, right? We get so combobulated with our problems. It's not that we can't also have access to the divine, it's just so often we're weighed down with the earthly concerns. So the ancestors, really more so than almost any of your guides, understand your earthly concerns because they have lived through this too. Uh, and um, we're about ready to end here too, but I just want to throw out a juicy tidbit because I guess I just like to do that at the end sometimes.
So in many spiritual traditions, there is this idea, too, that the ancestors stay over there for a while on the other side and offer advice and do that for a period of time. But then they come back in the same family or group lines. So there is a saying in, in many traditions that we are the ancestors. We are the ancestors. I want you to think about that. Don't overthink it. I want you to meditate on it and reflect on it. This idea that perhaps we are the ancestors who have gone to the other side and come back. Something to think about. All right, until next time, uh, start working with your ancestor if you can, or at least figuring out who that's going to be. Or if you're going to work with your first, uh, the first human ancestors, you can do that. Uh, you could work with ancestors in general. I actually like to see you be a little bit more specific than that for the purposes of these classes. I don't have anything against it normally, but you're trying to deepen your practice here, so uh, moving with more specificity is helpful. Um, you know, you could even, if there's a particular, you know, region, you know, you identify with, I mean, maybe for me, I mentioned some of that uh, Native American blood that is in me that I don't know much about. Maybe. I could take up, you know, trying to identify more with that. Uh, that's not what I'm working on right now, but it could be something. Um, you know, if you have ancestors of, you know, a certain part of African descent, I mean, African is a big place, so if you could kind of narrow it down even more than that, that would be good. And if you're not, you know, just start there. Um, maybe, you know, you're from Mexico, and so you're going to have the the Native Americans from that part of the world, and also your Spanish ancestors, too, often. Uh, so you could even say, you know, picking that larger ethnic group. And remember, if you're adopted, I mean, even if you don't share the ethnicity of your adopted family, you share in that spiritual bloodline. You know, in the ancient world, it wasn't all bloodline. If you were taken into the family, then that becomes your clan, your spiritual heritage. And of course, all ancestors go back to the first human ancestors anyway. Um, but, you know, it does help to work with more specificity for some of us, I think. It's going to help us to, um, you know, there's spiritual energies with these different cultures. I mean, I think we all know this intuitively, right? We know, like, if we listen to the drumbeat of some of the Native American tribes, it's slow and grounding and we can feel the groundedness in many of those cultures versus, um, you know, listening to the higher pitched Celtic drum or the African drums, there's different ones, of course, but uh, the singing drums, whoa, they really sing and they're rhythmic and that's a, you know, uh, we're going down to South America and some of that music there. Um, I mentioned music, music is a great way to connect with your ancestors. It's one of the primary ways if you can uh, have uh, a recreation of the music they might have listened to. Um, you know, this is really good too for uh, more contemporary ancestors. If, if your uh, ancestors went to a certain church and sang certain songs, you know, it's often not too hard to find out what those songs might have been like and to begin learning that music. And listen, don't let the fact, if you don't feel like you're musical, don't let that stop you. I mean, your voice will be like honey on the ears of your ancestors singing their songs. It will uplift them. And, and you know, if I haven't said that already, you know, when you do this work, by default, when you connect with your ancestors, yes, they are facilitators for you. They're going to help increase love and bring abundance and peace. But you are also edifying them. You are giving them an energy that keeps them alive and helps them to be happy on the other side. So. It really is a two-way communication. Alrighty, well on that note, <clears throat> on that note, dear one, I wish you all the love and all the blessings of the ancestors. Until next time.